welcome to this video, friends. This is a intro disclaimer of sorts that if you're coming from my part one video, this is part two where I'm sharing nine tips for how to do a 30 day drawing challenge or painting challenge or whatever 30 day <laughs> challenge that you want to embark on with your creative pursuits. And as I mentioned in the first video of this two part series, I originally wanted to make one video documenting my journey and my thoughts at the end. It turned out to be way too long, like an hour long. So I split it in half. Part one, which was the first video, was my vlogging journey of doing the 30 day challenge and then I shared my lessons and reflections at the end of the video. The second video is going to be purely my tips to beginner artists who are interested in doing a 30 day drawing challenge. So I hope this is helpful to you. When we get to the video it's going to get kick off kind of awkward because I had it at the end of my other video. So that's the context. Thank you again for watching and Enjoy. So yeah, those are my three lessons and let's dive into the tips because I have a lot of tips. If you are a new artist, a creative person trying to explore a new medium, maybe these tips will be helpful to you. So let's dive in. Okay, tip one is define your why. Because seriously, why are you going to torture yourself for the next month doing this thing every single day? You need to ask yourself why. I also have notes written down because my brain just processes things better when I'm like writing. So <laughs> set an intention and goals for yourself. Like why are you doing this? When the going gets tough, what is going to inspire you and motivate you to get back and keep going? Because like I said, there were days where it was a late day at work. I was exhausted. I just wanted to come home and go to sleep and not do anything, but I had to work on my drawing and post it to Instagram. So in those really bad days, I reminded myself why I'm doing this and also reminded myself that it's only 30 days. And again, my intentions, which I said at the beginning of the video, were one, to improve my art skills just in general as a beginner artist, to develop self-discipline within my art practice, especially a daily art practice, and even more specifically within digital drawing because I was really just comfor comfortable in my traditional sketchbook and I wanted to branch out and create digital art. And my third reason goal was to create a, por a portfolio. It's so hard to say that. Create a portfolio of 31 original pieces by moi. And overall, I was just doing this for myself. Like this whole endeavor was not to get more followers on Instagram. This was purely for me to see if I could hack it, if I could do this 30 day challenge. And if I did kind of come out on it and was still excited and inspired to create, then that was information for me to keep going and really pursue my passion and my dreams to create art and share it and sell it <laughs> soon in the future. My battery is dying. Okay, where were you? Where were we? Okay, we just got to one of the tips. So tip two is to understand your capacity for a 30 day challenge. Now, what do I mean by this? Ask yourself some questions. Do you actually think you can devote time to a 30 day practice, whatever it's going to look like for you. Ask yourself, how much time can you devote to this challenge on a given day? So I personally went all in with Drawtober in October and was like, this is my life for the next 31 days. Nothing else matters. We're, we're focused on this. And when I am like committed to something as a Taurus who is stubborn, loyal, I will commit, I will show up and I will follow through if it's something my heart is 100% in and I I did that. <laughs> now this also means that other things in my life took a back seat, <laughs> such as you. All right, of course, I put my other battery in and it dies. So let's hurry up, okay? So I forgot during this whole like spiel about time and other things taking a back seat to talk about like work because I am not <laughs> A full-time artist, obviously, I have a day job, I have other commitments, and art is just a hobby, a passion that I'm building on the side. So how did I fit that in to working every day? Great question. So like I said, October was focused on drawing. So I made a point to use personal days and like paid time off so I could have extra time during 
the month to work so i really used a lot of time off or i went into work and like worked a half day yada 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 and i want to be transparent about this because it's not like i'm a magical machine who can wake up early do art go to work work a full day come home cook clean do all those things make art post it on instagram like that's not the reality of it i don't want it to seem that way uh, but I did, you know, hack my life <laughs> to say to focus on drawing and that meant maybe I wasn't working a full day. I Maybe I took a half day, maybe I left. I did try and work a little bit in the morning, but not really. And I worked a lot during my lunch break, mostly on like coloring and like easy things like that. And would save the like sketching and composition design part to my evenings when I had more time to be creative and think through those ideas. During the weekends when I was being social, I <laughs> tried to get stuff done ahead of time. And when I went to the amusement park, I took my iPad and luckily my friend drove like an hour and a half and I was drawing in the car, working on my wizard wiener. Uh, so I really tried to find as much time to work on drawing and when I say like, I literally, when I wasn't working or eating or sleeping, I was drawing, like that is literally <laughs> what my life was like during October and I knew that going in and I accept that expectation for myself. So this goes into again with like boundaries and capacity with your work schedule and things if you do work part if you do work full time and this thing you're working on you don't have all the time in the world in it. Try and find ways to make time for it which might mean sacrificing certain things, social commitments, maybe taking some time off of work and telling people hey can you help me out with chores this week or maybe like you're not going to be cooking you're going to getting takeout a lot you know and if you guys have more questions that i did not answer regarding like work and like what my day-to-day -day life looked like let me know because there's only so much i can like push out of my brain and i'd be happy to answer anything in more detail down in the comments or maybe in a future video but hopefully that kind of explains like what my life looked like behind the scenes uh, tip three um, going off of understanding your capacity if you can actually show up for this challenge is to make your own rules and set your boundaries set boundaries friends it can be very easy to get caught up in what other people are saying you should do during this challenge what's wrong what's right there are certain rules i mean i guess drawtober came out of inktober as the kind of original i don't know i don't know you can give me a lesson <laughs> if i'm wrong drawtober is kind of a nice little catch-all because pick your medium and just go <laughs> so that would be my biggest advice especially as a beginner artist is to not look at the shoulds and what other people are saying set your own rules set your own boundaries and an example for me was that i wanted to create 31 original pieces no fan art no draw this in your styles no direct referencing i wanted to come up with my own ideas and compositions inspired by the prompt lists that i was following we did that we did that friends before i kind of committed to that i had a few draw this in your style posts as backup that i was like well if the going gets tough i can just post these daily and say you know this was from a draw this in your style i did a few months ago but it didn't get to that point and i'm very proud to say that i did come up with 31 pieces that came from me and that makes me happy and i wanted to do that that was a boundary, a rule, a rule, an intention that I set for myself. Now, going with the should, some people could say that I cheated <laughs> because I reused a lot of elements in my previous illustration. So like once I started developing like a kind of core, like the first week I had a lot of like little elements like candles and leaves and sparkles and backdrops that I reused in the future posts because one, I'm allowed to do that, it doesn't, I told myself I can do that. And if anybody, anybody else says, you can't do that, screw them. But the reason I reused these elements was to expedite my daily process because some days I didn't have very much time to draw and it made it a lot easier and quicker to follow through. So shortcuts, little like personal rules, boundaries, things like that can really help like the process and allow you allow you to keep going so if there are any little hacks that you can do along the way so you can keep going 
do it friend, do it. Tip four is to share your journey with others because we all need accountability, right? There are different ways to share your journey. You can share online, on your social media, if you have a YouTube channel, <laughs> hello, <laughs> do this whole like video, which can I just say that it was a whole task in itself to not only be drawing every day, doing the Instagram posting, but like filming and like showing up to talk. Like, let's just, can I just get a round of applause people? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you can also share with your friends, your family, your partner, roommates, your colleagues, just tell anybody who would be interested. It's very helpful to share your goals with other people because it kind of creates this external accountability. At least I respond very well and thrive when I tell people I'm doing something, especially this 30 day challenge and me like saying it on Instagram and telling people I'm doing this and filming this video and like committing to that, it all helped me show up every day. I also shared it with some friends and I told my mom and I told George, my partner, because we lived together and my world quickly got swooped up in Drawtober and that meant I could not show up for other things. So it's just me being like, hey, I'm doing this. Can you support me? Or, hey, I'm doing this. There might be some nights where like, I'm checked out and I need some help, you know, kind of putting that out there again to make your life easier and set those boundaries. Tip five, plan ahead as best as you can. Let's talk about scheduling, timing, like how much time I spent on this challenge. Cause these are, this is like the nitty gritty detail that I wanted to know. And like, I'm going to be upfront and say that I did not plan as I would have planned if I knew how to plan. I really had no idea how to plan like in my head yeah i could sit down and get the prompt list out be like yeah we're gonna draw this we're gonna draw this but like actually doing it and like executing it became very overwhelming i feel like i didn't really get a grasp on anything until like <laughs> two weeks in and that's just like beginner this is my first time i don't know what's going on i just have to like do it and figure it out as i go so that was kind of another like underlying intention was that i was really just going with the flow and learning literally every single second of this journey and since this is my first time doing this as a beginner artist i know so much now that if i do another challenge or draw tober again and next year i know what to expect and i know how to plan a little bit better and the main my main tip for you guys in terms of prep work is to try and be prepared in terms of like your prompt ideas and your compositions and maybe even sketch those out in advance so it's like you have your 30 prompts figure out your 30 composition ideas or do like a, a major sketchbooking session this i'm talking like this is like a week or weeks before you actually start posting online that was what i wanted to do and it didn't work out that way but maybe list out your ideas of what you're going to post each day what you need to draw get your compositions figured out pick a day to batch out you know sketching like sketch as much as you can that way when it's actually during the challenge and you're like on the ground it's the day to post you're not coming up with an idea you're not sketching it out you're not drawing it you're not posting you're not doing all of that you have you're halfway there you have the sketch you have the that all planned out you can just show up and color and draw or paint or whatever you need to do so that is how i'm going to approach a 30-day challenge in the future and that's my tip tip six is to pick a medium that you can stick with that you want to do that is going to align with your capacity now for me obviously my medium of choice was digital drawing that's something i want to pursue as an artist i want to improve on and it's fun so if you're a beginner artist like doing something that's easy and comfortable for you maybe it's just drawing in a sketchbook and then taking a picture and posting that on instagram every day i could have done that but i kind of did that a few years ago so i wanted to like up level how i was approaching this which is why we did <laughs> digital drawings if you're a well seasoned uh artist or sorts maybe you want to try a new medium i know a lot of people do this where they want to explore painting or knitting or baking Ooh, baking 31 days wow that that could be that could be interesting but basically like know your level in terms of an artist don't complicate things keep things simple so you can keep up with it and just run with it friends run with it tip seven is to find a challenge if you're doing like a challenge hosted by another person or group that aligns with your style or the community that you're trying to 
cultivate or engage with. So what this means is that I personally hopped between a few different challenges on top of also using my own ideas and I actually mapped out all the different ones and how many I did. So the number one challenge that I did was Pop Stober 2023 uh, by Iliaria Pops. I think I'm saying, I'm probably saying that wrong. I'll put their Instagram below. But I joined that because my friend Amanda was doing that challenge and it was fun to kind of do it along with her. So I did 11 days of Pop Stover and then I did nine days or nine drawings of my own like ideas, uh, a lot pulled from Pinterest or like sketchbook ideas or kind of sketches that I already had planned out. And then I did six days of Peach Tober by Furry Little Peach, uh, which is a big creator, big challenge, um, which has a lot of action and engagement going on. So it was nice to kind of go in between Pop Stover, which was a smaller account, my own ideas, and Peach Tober, which was a bigger community to try and reach more accounts. And then I did a few other uh, challenges in between, which I'll list here. So the reason I recommend joining a challenge that kind of aligns with your style or the audience you want to reach is because while this was a kind of sub goal of mine, it wasn't really a major goal. Uh, if you participate in a challenge that's hosted by a larger platform, your art is going to reach more people, right? So that's kind of an advantage to joining a bigger challenge like Peachtober. Another kind of great pro to doing a challenge is that you can build your community, you can engage with other artists, and you can potentially get your work shared by other artists and reach more accounts and grow your following, which I think is a great aspect and reason why like Instagram in particular is a great place for artists to share their work and get to know other artists and just build their career. Tip eight, try not to get caught up in comparison and what others are doing. I guess I kind of talked about this a little bit with like setting your own rules and your own boundaries. But again, know your skill level, remind yourself that everybody is on a different journey, everybody started on a different day, we all have different life circumstances. It can be fun to see what others are doing during the challenge, it's definitely inspiring for me to log in and see other people doing a variation of Drawtober and, and whatever capacity it looked like for them, and that inspired me and got me more excited to show up to my sketchbook. But don't let that trap you and let others don't let other people's success define your success and your worth as an artist and a human being tip nine which i almost forgot about it was self-care friends like on a daily basis have some kind of self care routine or habit that you can do that allows you to take a break and rest for me i really tried to stick to my daily like routines like my morning routine my evening routine and yada yada yada. I just realized that I completely forgot to talk about like timing and schedule and things and this is actually a good time to bring this in like just overall how I fared this challenge like as a human like <laughs> as a new artist like how am I doing am I am I just my overall kind of feelings on that but before we do that I wanted to share some stats I don't know where my stats went I put everything into a spreadsheet and then I thought I wrote this stuff down. And I don't know where it went. So let me open sheets. Okay, so something that's really interesting that I wanted to also look at in terms of stats were how long it took me to draw each drawing, which in Procreate, there's a magical little function where you can go into your settings for your canvas and see how many strokes each drawing took and how long it took. Uh, so I went into my spreadsheet and logged every single piece and how long it took. I did not count or log how many strokes it took because I don't really want to look at that right now. <laughs> but time definitely was an interesting thing to see because my longest drawing, which was my self-portrait day one, we learned things quickly, was 13 hours and like 15 minutes. It took me 13 hours to draw this. like. I kept going back and forth on the hair and the face and it took a while to get to a point where I actually liked it. And again, I'm a, I'm a new artist, I'm a newbie. We're learning every day and that time reflects that. Meanwhile, the shortest drawings were about an hour long, which included, actually they were both at the end, which kind of makes sense because I was exhausted. So day 30 was moss, that took an hour and day 31, this cute little ghost also took me an hour. And these were for Peachtober and they actually gained a little bit more engagement than some of my other posts. Again, going back to the more time I spent 
on a drawing doesn't mean that it's going to get more likes or anything. And actually there were quite a few drawings that took me like an hour or an hour and a half that were very simple and got a ton more engagement. Okay, so the big stat that I really was interested in was how long it took me to draw each piece a day. So in total, I spent about 110 hours just literally in Procreate drawing 31 drawings, which equates to about, so that equates to 4.58 days of drawing. Like I literally drew for four and a half days straight, if you wanna like think of it that way. It wasn't literally straight, but that's how much drawing I did in October, four and a half days worth. So in my calculations, this averages to about three and a half hours a day. Now that does not include like the prep work if I had to sketch it out or like getting into the creative flow, like getting my iPad setting up, getting comfy, you know? So I'm gonna say about four hours a day per drawing. Um, and that's an average between all 31 drawings, the longest being 13 hours and the shortest being an hour. And that's good information that I am definitely gonna be taking with me next year. And it'd be so interesting to see like log, log everything next year and see how long each piece takes me then and compare it to now. Like, and that actually is a great way to measure your progress as a beginner artist is to look if you're in, you know, Procreate, look how long it takes you to draw a piece, how many strokes it takes you to do it. And if you're outside of Procreate, maybe try and track your time like in a week to see how long you spend drawing something. The other interesting thing I wanted to show you guys it was my Instagram <laughs> statistics. Not that there's anything really epic for me to share, but I think what I wanted to show you was like, how many followers I gained within the October time frame. So as you can see under growth, I had 27 follows between October 1st and October 31st and four unfollows. So 27 new people found my account, was like, let's follow Sheila and wow, was not expecting that friends. So my account, I mean, it's not a lot. I'm at 150 followers, but as a newbie who's just like not out here to gain followers or really expect followers, I was pleasantly surprised. Now the other interesting stats, and I'm not a stats person, so I don't really care, was accounts reached. So like how many accounts did I reach during the month of October? Um, 556 accounts were reached, 87 being followers and 469 being non-followers. So I reached like 469 people who ended up not wanting to follow me, which is like information to kind of take what you will, but it's also interesting that over 400 people saw my art and it reached that many people. And engagement, let's just look at engagement. So f again, from October 1st to the 31st, we had 136 accounts engaged, meaning they were liking, they were commenting, they were sharing, yada, yada, yada. 52 of those were my followers and 84 were non-followers, which actually is also interesting that 84 accounts who were not following me commented, liked, shared, yada, yada. And it was nice to kind of see you know, which posts people were most interested in. So you can kind of see, I guess, my top posts here. I don't know, with the best engagement was my little ghost, followed by my bat, my profile picture, a reel, and my little tombstone there. And then here are my interactions, 756 content interactions. Anywho, those are my stats. Okay, friends, I think that's the end of this video because I've been rambling, rambling, rambling. I have to go edit, figure out how I'm gonna chop this down into a bite-sized video. <laughs> but overall, I'm really glad that I participated in Draw Challenge. Like I said earlier, this whole challenge kind of like ignited my like spark as an artist and allowed me to really see myself as an artist, embrace that identity and kind of go forth uh, with my goals and dreams of potentially selling my art, not potentially, I will be selling my art online in the near future. And in 2024, I really want to focus on my art in terms of like the business side of things and things like that. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe to follow along with that journey. And with that said, thank you guys for being here, making it through the end of this video, which I can't believe. Comment a little like art palette emoji if you made it all the way <laughs> to the end of the video. You guys are the true champions sitting through all of my rambling and I'll catch you in the next one.